are back and we're moving into our second conversation. As we said, today we are officially commemorating International Day of Older Persons and there's quite a bit going on and we're going to get all the details from our representatives on set. We have with us Roxanne Marin, who is the president of the Belize Assembly of Persons with Diverse Ability. Welcome back. We have Ishel Poot, who is the executive director for the National Council on Aging. Good morning, everyone. And on the end, we have Dr. Natalia Beer, who is the Child and Maternal Health Unit representative for, from the Ministry of Health. Thank Good, you. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so <laughs> three different entities here, but you have a common cause, and, and we're launching it on the International Day of Older Persons, yeah. right? Tell me more. So October 1st, International Day of Older Persons, this year the theme is the journey to age equality. And over the last um, two years, I think more or less, that I started engaging these ladies in conversation, we've been talking <coughs> about standardizing priority service in Belize. Yeah. So we're talking about your priority service lines and the service you receive at the end of the line. Because a lot of times when we talk about access, people start telling me about ramps and rails. So we're not talking about ramps and rails for um, this campaign, which yeah. is entitled Front of the Line. We're talking about what happens when you get into the establishment and the service that you receive. Yeah. So our Front of the Line campaign launches today at 9.30 at the Princess Hotel and Casino. And Front of the Line looks at creating priority service for older persons, persons with disabilities, uh, pregnant women, and parents with small children in tow. So it looks at that sector of our population who can't stand in a line and wait for an extended period of time for varying reasons. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think it's so interesting because we've been talking about priority access for elderly persons mm -hmm. especially. Um, but clearly expanding it to other vulnerable groups make it and, and makes it even more easier to sell to companies that buy into it, I'd imagine, right? Or oh. should. Well, we hope so. <laughs> we hope so. I mean, one of the things that we do try to do at the Council on Aging is we do focus on older persons and the issues that face older people, but we also look at the aging trajectory and what are the issues that impact our population at different ages. Yeah. And so when we looked at the Front of the Line campaign, we thought about who are other persons who need priority access. Yeah. And of course, those persons who are differently able. Yeah. who have challenges but want to remain independent. Of course, women who are pregnant mm -hmm. and have to carry on their daily activities. Standing and moving around can be a form of exercise. Standing and being standing for too long can impact the health yeah. of the unborn child and the mother. And then we think about those parents. And it's interesting that we put parents um, with infants. That's what's on the brand label, parents with infants. Because we're not just looking at women, because we're oftentimes doing women and children, but it includes fathers, guardians, people who have those small children who are still in arms, mm -hmm. who yeah. can't stand for too long, who are placing things in their mouth and very, very active and yeah. might cause, you know, some kind of disruption within whatever is happening during the day. Yeah. I kind of want to say that this just seems like basic manners and we have to launch a campaign mm -hmm. for it. What does that say? <laughs> uh, well, um, <clears throat> in the, for example, in the bus, traveling in the yeah. bus, it's not an automatic um, a reaction to see a woman walking with a child below two years in arms to give her a seat. Sometimes mm -hmm. min minutes pass mm -hmm. and no one wants to get up. So I think it's, it's, um, it's needed yeah. because we're not there totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And looking at uh, this year's theme, what uh, exactly do we mean when we say age equality? Well, we're looking at minimizing those inequalities that so come as a result of age. And of course, when we talk about older persons, we talk about ageism. Um, and that's looking at how we stereotype yeah. people in regards to just their age. Um, one of the, a few years ago, we launched uh, elder abuse awareness video and there's a little segment where this, this little old lady, she's dressed up, she's ready to go out and she, her grandson comes in and he's like, I don't know why you have to want go anywhere, anyway. And many times we look at older people and we start to assume that they don't want to do certain things or they mm -hmm. can't do certain things or they shouldn't 
be able to do certain things because you are older. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you stay home and rock in your rocking chair kind of thing. Yeah. But even when we think about the journey to age equality, we also think about the other sectors of our population who also face stereotypes based on their age or on their situation where mm -hmm. they are. So we're looking at how we address those issues in behaviors, what are things that we can change, and Front of the Line gives us a great opportunity to be yeah. able to make some of those changes and raise some of that awareness. Yeah. Roxanne, clearly, you know, this, this is such a, 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 I mean, like I said, I think it's basic manners, but necessary because people don't yeah. necessarily have that kind of a, uh, respect or I don't even respect, but just kindness to other people. But when I think of BAPTA, for example, what becomes clear is that even as we age, mobility can possibly and will most likely become an issue. Correct. And so even if a person doesn't have an accident or isn't born with some form of diverse ability, it doesn't mean that we won't need the assistance of your organization to advocate for us. Well, keep in mind as you age also, it might be multiple factors that yeah. might be a challenge. And so it does not necessarily have to be a physical challenge. Yeah. Even something as simple as a mental challenge, as yeah. you get older, dementia is always a possibility. And <clears throat> our population, for some reason over the years, have lost the love for our elderly and for persons with disabilities. Unless you really have someone with a disability in your home, it doesn't really get you as to what that person goes through on a daily challenge. Yeah. And so outsiders can be so callous, like not caring, like mm -hmm. cold-hearted towards persons with disabilities. Uh, or children with disabilities right now, or young people with autism for the most part. We're having a lot of people, young teenagers, peer pressure, jaunting them, you know, taunting them, yeah. carrying them on, and it's just a matter of compassion and courtesy. That could be your family member, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And so we always want to bring that awareness for you to have compassion towards other persons that are not in the position that you are in, because you never know. It could be a sickness, it could be an accident, it could be any reason why is it that you are also on the other side of that spectrum. Yeah. And you know, I think sometimes people just don't know what it's like. Yeah, because they've never been in the position. Yeah. Because they've never been in the position. Yeah. Like, yeah. So Front of the Line has two components. One, of course, is the um, development of the standard. We're yeah. starting to develop a national standard, which at this point has to be a voluntary standard because there are no legal um, documents that link yeah. to priority service access. Interesting to note is that nowhere in the Caribbean has there been a standardization of priority service. Mm -hmm. And even in Latin American countries, all of their priority service provision is linked to legislation. Mm. So we're really creating something new mm -hmm. in Belize. Um, we've been talking to partner organizations, representatives from our key population or mm -hmm. our target population, the older persons, persons with disabilities, pregnant mothers, you know, um, that kind of uh, dialogue has been taking place. And then we've started to engage our essential service providers. Mm -hmm. And we're really looking at what is priority service as they have defined it in their institution. Yeah. And what we're going to create is a minimum. You can have no less mm -hmm. than this, but you can have more. Okay but no less than this. Um, so when you go into an institution and there is a clearly marked priority service line, when you arrive at that line as an older person, a person with diverse ability, you know exactly what kind of material are you going to get. If it's yeah. going to have a larger font, how that um, representative is going to be able to communicate with you, and those are the aspects that we're looking at. So that yeah. is one side of front of the line. And then the second side of front of the line is working on that behavior change. Mm -hmm. They talked about because we can have a standard, we can have the lines, but you know, one thing that older persons say to me is, you know, when they pull them out of the bank line, for example, and you hear the murmurings, mm -hmm. you know, the murmurings, um, sometimes they just leave me in the line because yeah. then I don't become a target of the murmurings. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing how those things really impact someone's ideas of themselves, their yeah. self-worth, mm -hmm. the way they might feel targeted. So we're going to be working along with older persons organizations, our stakeholders, uh, partner organizations for this project, to have education rolled out around the country, talking mm -hmm. about why we need to respect priority service lines and how that actually creates a better Belize, not only for the persons in the priority service line, but yeah. also for ourselves. 
I guess it's also important to have adequate training too for the staff because mm -hmm. putting a, a sign is one thing, but then yeah. if I'm going, if I have an impatient person dealing with me, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it takes me a bit of time to kind of get everything together, that doesn't make priority access any more nicer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I want to mention at this point the Babta ID cards. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, Belize Assembly for Persons with Diverse Abilities is working on our national disability ID cards. Yeah. Uh, it's important, especially for me. I have a hidden disability, so you don't see my disability when you see me. However, my challenge, one of my challenges is that I am unable to stand for long periods of time. So every time I stand in the line, I have to get uncomfortable to have to say to the security, could you please tell the next person behind me that I have to sit down and wait until it's my turn. And so since the disability ID cards, we did a pilot project two years ago. And so the card that we have now, oh, I educate people on it a lot. You're going to be seeing this a lot more. More people are going to be coming out with this because this is what identifies us that we have a right to be in this line. Because first thing people will look at me, oh, well, she, not wrong, she, where she needs to stand up over there. I don't have to explain to you why I'm in this line. However, with the disability ID cards, we definitely have a plus. Yeah. And so I invite people to come out to the expo fair today. Mm -hmm. We're going to have several booths. Babta definitely is going to be there. And so this is a point, this is a pr platform for you to sign up and become a member of Babta to get your ID cards in Belize City and the rest of the country. Yeah. It's also a similar situation where it's, it's, voluntarily acknowledging the card mm -hmm. correct so it does show that we do need to do some work in putting in proper regulation so if there's any company and I wouldn't understand why that doesn't want to recognize uh, a BAPTA card or doesn't want to provide priority access that they will need to because we do have people in the population that need it Definitely. yeah how far are we from that well we've placed but, in um, our application with the Bureau of Standards and so that process can take us anywhere from 18 months to two years. Mm -hmm. um, we've already started a lot of the dialogue. Um, yeah. Like I said before, most persons um, we've spoken to are on board one way or the other. But um, so we're looking forward to within the next year to have some real strides. Yeah. And then within, I'm, I'm optimistic that within the 15 month period, we will definitely yes. have a draft together to be able to move that forward. Do you think it's a hesitation or it's just that people don't think of the vulnerable population? I think people don't think about it. Mm. I think until it hits your door, it. Until, until it becomes your reality, it's not really considered. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. since we're still at the, I guess, voluntary stage, has there been, um, you know, in, in your experience, any pushback saying that, oh, well, you know, maybe I can't afford to, you know, expand to have a special service or to do this? Well, the interesting thing is going to be how we're going to define where the service is because most service providers, one way or the other, already mm -hmm. have yeah. a priority service line. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. there are factors that you have to look at where there are subunits of organizations, like subunits of banks, and those banks have maybe two employees within their little subunit or something like that. <coughs> so it's really <laughs> going to be looking at what's the reality and what's feasible. Yeah. Um, and so there hasn't been any pushback. Um, what we've gotten is a few pers a few organizations have said, oh, you know, we have a priority access line, um, so we have it, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> so it's really just expanding the dialogue to say, okay, great, you have it. You know, what do you have? How yeah. is it working? Mm -hmm. And how will it translate into the into the standard? And it's very important that mm -hmm. they're involved in the standard development because we want to ensure that it's something that they are able to implement because yeah. we can create anything but if they are not able to because of resources because of space because yeah. of staff then it's not practical it, it doesn't move us anywhere it you doesn't uh, require more space and it doesn't require more yeah. staff it's just a matter of educating Kidding. the yeah. population yeah. and the staff no, that is working yeah have you, have you made a special reach out to the transportation industry because i think doctora the example that you you pointed out with a pregnant woman, a woman with an infant, mm -hmm. an elderly person, by the time they can get on the bus, yes. not being able to have a mm -hmm. seat, or if you need special assistance in getting into the bus? Well, we have. We've, we've that opened the dialogue with um, the transport department. What we mm -hmm. need to do is formally open the dialogue with the actual bus, bus providers, yeah. bus which is a, a different 
mm. a different conversation. Interesting to note is that in the major municipalities at the bus station where they have kind of the gate system. Terminal mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. The terminal staff will pull people outside. Okay. Older persons to allow them to board first. Okay. I've seen them do it also with persons with uh, visible um, <coughs> disabilities. disabilities. Mm -hmm. They come out. I've seen them do it with women, with small children. I've seen them do it. Um, so they will pull you out of the line and then you will wait outside. They will, um, people will come off the bus and then you will be able to get okay. on. Um, what we haven't had a formal discussion about is where would be priority seating, yeah. how that would work. And then what happens if you are traveling on a regular bus and the bus is making stops and you get picked up along the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you talk about being able to, to launch this campaign, you have several uh, partners on board. Mm -hmm. um, the three of you here, you're working with the Bureau of Standards. Mm -hmm. w what is your hope? That people will see it and say, I want to sign on. How do I know the regulations? Well, our hope for it today is we're starting the educational campaign. Yeah. A side of it. We're launching the brand image. There is a very catchy jingle that has been produced for it that will start being um, disseminated on mass media. Yeah. While we continue the dialogue, um, we've spoken to our major service providers and utilities already. Mm -hmm. um, and they've committed one way or the other to support the Front of the Line campaign and also be a part of the development of the national standard. So it's hoping that those who we've reached out to that might not have been as forthcoming, yeah. we'll say, all right, you guys are serious. <laughs> Sign us on. We're going to be a part of this program. That you'll be persistent, yes. right? Yes, and also part of launching the campaign is also to have the key population and also the community at large to start to hold businesses accountable mm. for the priority service line. And we believe that that's a major issue as well once people can understand what the priority service line is, what it really does, then it becomes the onus on all of us to ask, well, where is your priority service line? Yeah, um, that's why you have signage. That's, That's what you're adding in now. So it's mm -hmm. not just saying lip service that you have it. You need a sign pointing out where it's going to be. Exactly. And chairs to go along with that sign. And chairs. What else is mm -hmm. included? Right now we're focusing mainly on the signage, the appropriate waiting area, seating area, uh -huh. and also um, what kind of service they'll be able to access at the window when they get to the window. Okay. The materials they'll be able to access. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things. Now, Dr. Rao, we always talk about pregnant women, but I, I didn't, I don't think we've ever expanded the conversation to include uh, parents with young infants. How, how did that come into the mix? Um, young children. Mm -hmm. We're talking about children below two years of age. Okay. Um, and especially the group, you know, between um, nine months, one year up to almost two years. Um, they are very active. Mm -hmm. They are exploring the world. They are scientists, <laughs> so they can't keep um, uh, quiet and they can't keep calm in one spot. So it's difficult because um, children below two years should not be left unattended at no moment. Yeah. So um, anxiety yeah. and irritability kick in quick yeah. if we have them in the line for an extended period of time, yeah. forcing them not to move around, forcing them not to express themselves. So yeah. It's, it's only opportune for um, and the frustration for it us builds to in parents. Yeah, lobby for these parents to get attention mm -hmm. as soon as possible. And if you look around, uh, it's not a lot of cases that you would find at once. Mm -hmm. So I won't think it would disrupt much the, the services that are already being provided. Yeah. But it's needed. And also for um, pregnant women, mm -hmm. um, we cannot see which women have risk factors. Mm. We cannot see which one of them um, may have uh, complications or prone to complications. Mm -hmm. So the quicker we can offer the services to them. Yeah. The, the pregnancy is not a disease, yeah. but um, it's already stress on the body and then this extra stress enough being in line for a prolonged time when it can be done quicker, well, yeah. it's just a matter of caring for them, caring for uh, persons with diverse abilities, caring for elderly, caring for pregnant women, and caring for parents with children below two years. Mm. Now, the, the underlying, um, I suppose, purpose 
behind all of this is that people should have the dignity to maintain their independence and yeah. move around freely. Yeah. And I know that that ties in very closely with when you're talking about the rights of persons Person. with diverse abilities or especially elder, the elderly population who, for one reason or the other, start to feel like they shouldn't or can't be able to execute their own, their own actions or their own responsibilities. Talk to me about how you, you fit this into the larger picture and having people understand that there shouldn't be limitations in what you can do if your abilities change or if you become older. For the most part, we will, okay, so let's talk about the convention. The convention states specifically what our rights are. Yeah. And so now it's, it's a matter of charting the course forward from bringing these wonderful conventions to tangible outcomes. Yeah. How does that trickle down from something good on a black and white paper to our population actually understanding? Mm -hmm. How should I love your neighbor as you love yourself? If I wouldn't want you to do something to me, just think about what I am doing to you. Yeah. Persons in the line standing up and having to be put aside and, and, and waiting and people murmuring. What is happening that you have to rush? Yes, you may everybody have a timetable, but three, five minutes, just compassion, just understanding, just empathy, just to say, my last week I just think about if that may me how you may I feel. Yeah. Just think about it, yep. if that may me how you may I feel. One of the things I tried recently, and it's a learning process for me, I blindfolded myself to see what would life be without having sight. Mm -hmm. And it was so frightening. Yeah. Until you become in that situation, you would never consider it but then you want things to change to make you feel included. How different is my life going to be if I just have two minutes to say, what can I do for you today? That nobody would even, people in wheelchairs, especially I can say, when I travel, I have to travel in wheelchairs because as I say, I cannot stand for long. And so simple things as having to wait for someone to come and push me when I'm in a wheelchair. Knowing that that's your job. You should be there standing happily to provide it. Yeah. And so simple things as employees, having that extra extended courtesy to someone. The whole of this campaign is about educating, okay. education. The signs are there, but it's about the personnel. It's about having that extra mile just because it's a human being. Have compassion. Have, have the situations that we face sometimes, it's like, how can people be so cool? to another human being. And so it's just a matter of saying, <clears throat> put yourself in that position and see how you would feel to have someone offer help to you just because it's out of, the, out of their nature to offer that help, not yeah. because they have to. And then when we talk about what they have to do, it's a whole different situation. So now, going forward, is to put the persons that are in authority to hold them responsible for what they're supposed to do yeah. at the end of the line. We are signing these wonderful agreements, but what are we doing? We're making these wonderful reports internationally, but what is really happening? At the end of the day, National Council of Aging is a commission. They have their own funding, they have their own staff. In the case of BAPTA, we are fully volunteer. Mm -hmm. Our board is all people that are working. We don't have a resource center as such. And so there's a lot to do that can be done, but there have to be momentum behind it. Yeah. And so BAPTA continues doing what we do, we always, public awareness, all we can do is speak on what is happening. Yeah. When it comes to children, uh, in December, International Day of Persons with Disabilities is coming up. Yeah. And so we're always doing our outreach program. And so listening to you guys, most of the time, all we do is go to the schools. What, we, what I'm thinking now is we need to start outreaching to the businesses now. Yeah. Because we have to sensitize people on to how to treat our people. If we don't want to act like we don't know it, then we have to start telling them what we don't. I agree. Yeah, and, and this is where we are right now. Yeah. It, it's all wonderful, but it needs to become real people. Yeah. yeah. Life is real right now. And the challenges that people with disabilities face, when I travel to different countries and I see what wonderful things is happening, and I feel so downhearted, like, how oh, I want to come back to Belize and make this happen in any way for my people. Eh? Like, I feel like I'm fighting an uphill battle, yeah. which shouldn't be. This is something that should be laid out because it's the right of my people to deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I appreciate all the passion in what you said, and I think, you know, you're saying it and you're speaking specifically for BAPTA, but I, it goes further. It goes to, yeah. to embracing any vulnerable population mm -hmm. with special needs. I yeah. mean, you know, when we think about the priority lines, because some people think that 
Priority lines for older persons is really just they can't stand and wait long. But we find that older people who are able to go and do their own banking are less likely to be victims of financial abuse because they keep that mm -hmm. autonomy, that independence. Yeah. Or people who are, older persons who are able to go out and pay their own bills, remain integrated and networked into their community because it is in paying your bills that you meet your friends, that you find out what's happening, that you see which store is having a sale, that you hear about something that you didn't know about. So they remain networked and a part of our community. So it's more than just not being able to mm -hmm. stand and wait. It's really about improving quality of life, yeah. promoting independence, and ensuring that our population, our older population, remains networked and connected to their local community. Yeah, and maintaining your autonomy too. On, on this day, you know, I, I want to give you the opportunity. We're talking about an aging population of how much? It should be around uh, 6 or 7% of our population, which is mm, around 19,000, mm -hmm. more or less. All right, and you're considered elderly at the age of 60. 60. Um, and our life expectancy, Doctor, do you know? It's about, what? 74. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you're looking at 15 <coughs> to 20 years, at least, uh, mm -hmm. after you reach the age of being a golden citizen. Mm -hmm. um, what else needs to be done? This is one great step. I mean, I have to say that much because now I, you know, at 60, I know I'd be able to have uh, preferential access when I get into a business place and they'll recognize that I deserve it for, for the simple fact that I have, uh, you know, <laughs> put in my dues to this mm -hmm. country so far. But there are other areas I know that are critical. T tell me where the well, next step is uh, definitely you'd want to think of financial resilience of our older population yeah. um, being able to afford their daily expenses yeah. and that's always a challenge um, because our pension system here is very young because we are not taught to invest in pensions we have a lot of older persons coming up to retirement yeah. who are not financially capable of taking care of themselves they were never taught to invest they were no opportunity for investment, so definitely looking at financial resi resilience is one area. Mm -hmm. Looking at areas of social support for mm -hmm. older people. Um, a lot of times uh, we talk about older persons and people think, oh, they're in a retirement home or you know this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We actually have, I think, less than 200 older persons across the country in retirement homes. Most of our older people are living in communities. They're living mm -hmm. with families, they're living with friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many of them are caregivers themselves. So we're looking at a population that continues to work with limited support. Right. So when we talk about social support, we're not only talking about you know Meals on Wheels programs, because that's one of the things that people throw at you all the time. Oh, Meals on Wheels programs. And yeah. We send in the young people to clean their yards every now and again. And they need more support you know yeah. they need access to community spaces that they can have recreation yeah. they need support where they can access caregiving and caregiving services that are available yeah. they need access to mobility aids and implements which brings me to our expo we will have mobility aids for distribution yeah. today mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they also need access to some very basic things uh, hygienic things um, like adult size pampers if you have an older person in your care yeah. that is bedridden or incontinent the cost of adult pampers atrocious is atrocious yeah <laughs> what is it tell me i, I never it's, it's, it's like 19 dollars for a small pack of, of 10 of 10 yeah wow yeah the lowest i've ever seen them gone is 12. Yeah. But it, it goes between 12 and 19 within that spectrum. Okay. Yeah, and if you, yeah you need a four or five of that for the month. At yeah. the end of the day, what's more important? A household and five, six people I have to make, so. Yeah, and, and the health implications if you don't change it as yeah. often. Mm -hmm. And and these are these are going back to kind of the basic dignity of, of human mm -hmm. beings and, and what they should be deserved, or what they do deserve. Um, uh, you know, getting older, you, you have a scent by itself. Mm -hmm. And so it's always critical for us to pay special care of yeah. daily hygiene when it comes to our persons, our older persons, mm -hmm. and our persons with disabilities. When you're a person that is bedridden, um, you tend to have bed sores a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for you to have medical services. Even if it's a person that cannot go to a doctor, have their different referral groups 
that would have a doctor to come and have you checked out at home. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to even look at the daily care of, per of older persons and persons with disabilities. Uh, when it comes to social interaction, even if they might not be able to leave, have someone go and sit with them. Have someone go and visit them. It's always important to have your people, keep them as active as possible. Yeah. They, I have a case right now with a 96-year-old that has dementia. He doesn't remember most of everything, most of who will come to look for him. But he gets so happy just to know that somebody is there to, to listen visitors. to his stories. Yeah. If nobody goes to look for him for two, three days, his spirit goes so much down. At 96, that's a time for you to be treasured. You've yeah. made this long journey. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. like I said, it's about having compassion for each other. Yeah. In Belize, and I must say in Belize, it's amazing that persons with disabilities and older persons, their families are their greatest support yeah. without yeah. any external support. And that by itself says a lot about those yeah. families. Yeah. However, at the end of the day, there are some persons that don't have families. And so if you know of an elderly person or a person with a disability that is in your community that lives by themselves, reach out. You never know how you made their life different for just that day, yeah. you know? Because the quality of life of a person includes yeah. their social life, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, so what other message do we want to send before we close off? Uh, and I want to say we do have the Aging Expo. I didn't forget. Uh, so today, um, we came up with a very ambitious task of hosting the very first Aging Expo uh -huh. at the Princess Hotel and Casino. It opens at 10.30 after a launch of Fanta de Lion campaign. Okay. We'll be having free medical services for older persons. Um, the regular checks, which include your glucose, your blood sugar, your blood pressure, um, your BMI. Mm -hmm. We'll also be having um, some dental services available. DCVI yeah. will be doing some eye screenings as well. Yeah. BAPTA will be there to sign up. You can find out how you can volunteer, support the work of BAPTA, or if you have a person with a diverse ability, how they can sign up to receive um, a, disability card, card. a disability card. Um, there will be pampering and self-care available. Ooh. So um, we'll be having manicures, I believe manicures, facials um, available. For older persons, the target population for the Expo are for older people, but it's open to the public. Because one of the things that we do have available is also older persons organizations. So if you have an older person, Health Page Belize will be there with their boot. Mm -hmm. Mercy Care Clinic will be there with their boot to sign people up. We will also be having um, the Home Health Caregivers Association will okay. be there to find out how you can access home care. We'll be having organizations that have um, mobility aids there as well in case yeah. you need to source some kind of mobility um, aid for your older person. Um, my Cielo Blue will be there with residential care. So there's a wide spectrum yeah. if you have That's an a older person. Community. Correct. Yeah. yeah. If you have an older person in your care and you're looking for resources, you're not sure where to go, uh, you might want some advice on something, you can stop by and see us today. Yeah. Digicel will be there along with the Department of Youth Services and they will <coughs> be doing our tech savvy demos. So if you're an older person today and you are still have questions about how to check your balance, how to ah, buy credit, how to text, that's great. what's going on with your email, yeah. Show up at our expo. We will have volunteers there that will walk you through the steps. Yeah. Walk you through the steps to help you understand how that's going to, how that works, how you can access it. Because we know yeah. that's one of the things. Um, sometimes my voice members will say, "Ask my granddaughter and do it for me. Never show me." Hmm. You or know? you do it yeah. too fast. Or you do it too yeah. fast. Or you do it too fast. You know. And so our older persons don't want you to do it for them. Yeah, they, they want to learn, learn. They want to how learn. to do it for themselves. And so, you know, I want to give a quick spout out to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, b and &E Trust and Sajikor for supporting the development and the launch of the Fanta de Line campaign. Excellent. Um, BNET has been with us working with Fanta de Line since the inception. They bought onto the idea very early on. Okay. And they've been supporting us in developing Fanta de Line. And then for our expo, we've been um, supported through Ramada Princess Hotel. We've also had sponsorship come to us through Boeing and Boeing, uh, CPBL, Citrus Products of Belize Limited, uh, Grace Kennedy, Mirab, Unicom. Unicomer. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm Simon Kwan. Oh. Simon Kwan always comes through Excellent. for the National Council on Aging and supporting older persons. I do have one more question. I heard your boots and I didn't hear. We had a conversation last week with Help Aid representatives talking about HIV in BFLA elderly persons. Be there. Yes, because they were a part of the demographic mm -hmm. that had new infections, infections. reported. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <coughs> so that's also included. Yeah. The FLA will be there with um, a number of their brochures mm -hmm. and education towards that. We could give them some condoms too or some demonstrations, right, yeah. Doctora? Yeah. yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, Doctora them? has supported National Council on Aging, their sexual health and aging. Um, which was a very popular workshop that you had in, in Belmopan, right? We've had it in Belmopan, Belize City, Corozal. I think mm -hmm. we're going south next year. We yeah. do it in a different one every year. Um, and so we do have um, uh, sex education information specifically directed towards older persons, yeah. um, which is always interesting. Yeah. Yeah. A any thoughts on that one, Doctora, when you talk of the HIV and also how there's a need for reproductive health education even into the uh, older years? Well, the services are available at yeah. the different health facilities and also during mobile clinics. Yeah. The ministry is working on um, improving the community platform. Yeah. Um, right now we have one person per community, but the community health workers, mm -hmm. but it's insufficient. So we definitely need to um, expand yeah. to have at least 10 persons per community, and that will help uh, provide more services and identify those who are at need. And definitely we need to include um, the elderly yeah. in that population. All right. Well, <laughs> ladies, thank you for coming in uh, today. Uh, this morning, actually, it's going to be official launch of Front of the Line campaign. Uh, hopefully, is there a special sign that we should look out for when we go into a business? Uh, a the color, decal, a logo, there it is. The decal, the... Um, you can see it all the way in the top, the little kind yeah. of traffic sign yeah. at the top. Yeah. All right, so businesses who have signed on to the front of the line campaign will display the front of the line logo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there you the see front it. of the line logo. All right. yeah. Thank you so much for coming in and best of luck. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about KTV Latino. So please stay tuned. <laughs>